in the next series of videos, we are mainly going to focus on the coordinate geometry of lines. We will look at how we can find the gradient of a straight line, the midpoint of a line joining two points, the length of a line joining two points, the equation of a straight line, and much more. In this lesson, we shall be focusing on how we can find the gradient of a straight line. Now let's get started. The gradient of a line is a measure of how steep it is or a measure of the slope of that line. Consider this line. The gradient of this line can be calculated as rise over run. In other words, it's vertical displacement divided by horizontal displacement. If we have a Cartesian plane, then gradient can be given by change in y divided by change in x. Change in y is the vertical displacement, change in x is the horizontal displacement. I have put here a coordinate grid paper with four lines, L1, L2, L3, and L4. We want to find the gradient of each of the lines. Let's start with the line L1. Now you need to know that when you're looking to find the gradient of a line on a grid like this, you first have to pick any two points on the line and make a right angle triangle like I've just done here. The right angle triangle can be drawn either above the line or below the line. I have drawn mine here below the line. Now, as you can see, we have four units parallel to the x-axis and six units parallel to the y-axis. And since gradient is calculated as change in y over change in x, we will have the gradient as 6 over 4, which can be reduced to 3 over 2 or 1.5. Now, it's important for you to note that when reading out your horizontal and vertical displacement, you have to start from the line. Now, if you start from here, you will have to move to the right, which is a positive displacement, then up, which is again a positive displacement. Hence, overall, the gradient of the line is going to be positive. Let's say you decide to start from here. Remember, you always have to start from the line. So if you start from this point, this means you have to go down, which is negative, giving us minus 6. Then to the left, giving us again a negative displacement minus 4. However, when you calculate change in y divided by change in x, you will still get a positive result since dividing two negative numbers still gives us a positive result. So I think you can see that the value of the gradient still comes out the same regardless of where you start to move. For the line L2, if I take these two points on the line and make a right angle triangle like this, you will find that starting from the line, change in Y is 5, positive 5. Since we're going up on the Y axis and change in X is minus 2, since we're going in the negative direction of the x-axis. Therefore, the gradient of the line is change in y over change in x, 
which is minus 5 over 2 or minus 2.5. At this juncture, I would want you to take note of the following facts. If you have a graph or a line, a straight line that has an upward slope like this one, then the gradient of that line is always going to be positive. And for a graph that is a downwards slope, like the one here, the gradient is always going to be negative. It is also important for you to know that a horizontal line has zero gradient. Therefore, if I take you back to the grid paper, the gradient of the line L3 must simply be zero. The last one is the line L4. The line L4 only has a vertical displacement, but the horizontal displacement change in X is zero. This makes the gradient of the line L4 undefined. So we say if a line is vertical, its gradient cannot be specified, or rather, it is undefined.